Deion Smith, rise and shout! Wide open, Deion Smith, to the end zone! Touchdown, what a call, and what a play! Touchdown, Cougars, he was wide open! Deion for the touchdown! We are live at Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Deion Smith hoping to find the end zone a few more times, many more times. Let's hope. Beginning at TCU, I had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Deion yesterday to discuss BYU being an underdog again, the best part of the bye week, and how in the world did the Cougars get the run game going with extra time to prepare? Deion Smith, one-on-one. -on -one. Deion, what would you say was was the best thing that happened for you individually during the bye week? Uh, I feel like I got a good a good opportunity to catch up on some football, you know, um, do a little extra film studying and, you know, spend the time to get my body back to 100%, you know, after these first four weeks, five weeks. Okay, hey, hard to argue with that. Get healthy, rest, watch a ton of football. How much football did you consume just as an observer over the last, let's say, four days? <laughs> um, let's just say um, every day I was flipping between games for on commercial break. Um, I was <laughs> checking the ESPN scores uh, from <laughs> all teams playing A through Z. Uh, so I, I watched as much football as I possibly can from the Oklahoma-Texas game to the uh, Ole Miss-Arkansas game. So... I watched a ton of football over these last few days. And it was a grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity just to be able to, you know, observe for a little bit because we're always in the moment. So it feels good to observe and learn and take notes from, you know, future opponents and even past opponents. Yeah, we'll get to TCU and your film study of the Horn Frogs because I know you're watching their games very closely and what just happened against Iowa State. But if you had to. I guess, pinpoint one thing that you feel like BYU football improved upon during the bye week or needs to do better in order to get ready for TCU and the other opponents, what would that be? I feel like we hit it hard last week. You know, uh, it's easy to kind of take your foot off the gas on a, on a bye week, especially when you don't have a game that Saturday. But I feel like we did a good job of, you know, just being physical and having very intense practices, you know, every day that we practiced last week. I feel like that's going to give us an edge for this week's preparation and also this game this week. So that was one thing that I feel like we really did good. And we focused on that just because we kind of felt like we needed it. So. What did you notice about TCU's defense and maybe some specifics of how you are preparing along with, your offensive coaching staff and your teammates to get ready for what the Horn Frogs are going to do defensively. Yeah, you know they have a lot of layers to their defense. You know they have the, those three high safeties. Um, you know, and we we treat it like it's just middle close, so it's like a cover one, a cover three, maybe. But you know it's an interesting defense, and you know they can create a lot of different mismatches and problems. You know up front and picking up in protection and even in the run game. So. You know, the biggest thing for us is to, you know, know our keys, you know, focus on the things that we need to focus on. So our objectives, being physical and just, you know, completing our assignment, you know, for all 11 men on the field. So. Yeah. What specifics would you say are the keys to potentially exploiting a very, very diverse and multiple defense like TCU will put out? Yeah. You know, for me, I think it's being efficient in the run game, you know, having a you know, a, a nice run attack this week and also being able to take advantage of, you know, the holes in their coverages down the field. So, you know, taking whatever they give us and whenever they want to play us a little tighter and a little manned up close to the line of scrimmage, then we'll go over the top of their head when we need to. So I think it's just being a little bit more efficient in the run game and just figuring out a way to have a little bit more balance to where, you know, we can take what they give us and not really hurt ourselves. BYU running back Deion Smith is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Now, a big picture question about the Big 12, because last weekend was absolutely bonkers. Yeah. A great game between Texas and Oklahoma. Iowa State upsets the TCU team that you're going to watch. Kansas blows out UCF. Oklahoma State upsets Kansas State. What do you make of all this, Deion? No, I think that, you know, uh, one of the 
statistics that we talked about in the meeting, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, after it was after the Kansas game. And it was up until October, end of October, there were eight teams that were still eligible to make it to the Big 12 championship. And I feel like that's like an underlying factor for this conference because you never really know. And it takes every game of the season because you – you might have the odds to win, but that doesn't mean that you're for sure going to walk out of that game with a guaranteed victory. So, you know, I feel like, you know, any week, anyone's susceptible to win. Yeah, what's interesting is, you know, take away the first two games, Dion at Arkansas, BYU was a notable underdog at Kansas underdog, even at home against Cincinnati going into the game, BYU was an underdog. You're an underdog again against TCU. What do you make of that role for BYU football as not being the favorite in any of the four power five games that you will have played this weekend? Yeah, I, I think that gives everyone on our team uh, an extra chip on our shoulders because we know we're going to be the underdogs. We know we're going to be overlooked, but that's honestly the position that's we're right where we want them, you know? So I think we use it as a confidence booster and it, it, it drives us a little bit more on the field, especially when we face a little bit of adversity because we know that, you know, it's expected and we know that we can overcome it. Now take me inside the team meetings in the running backs room specifically here for this next question, because we are in large part as a media group and as a BYU fan base observers and don't get to see all the nitty gritty specifics that you and your teammates and your coaches go through. But as you watch the film against Cincinnati and it seemed in large part that the run game found at times some better success than you had had against Arkansas and Kansas specifically. So what, what is trending in the right direction with the run game as you push toward TCU? I like mentality. You know, everyone has the mentality that we still have a lot of work to do and we continue to put that in on a day-to-day -day basis. That's one thing that drives us uh, from the offensive linemen to the running backs in our room. And that's just the mentality of, you know, knowing that we struggle a bit, but we still have the opportunity to fix it with the work that we put in. So that's been a, a main driver and just, you know, sticking to our fundamentals and, you know, keep just still believing in it. You know, even when everyone is doubting us and everyone sees that we struggle a bit, you know, we still have that faith and that confidence that we know that, you know, we're all great players and we're all able to execute our jobs at, at, at the right time. Deion Smith is with us on BYU Sports Nation. What kind of opportunity do you see in front of you against TCU? You're four and one as a team. You know, obviously a fifth victory is potentially out there, but this one just feels big. So what type of opportunity do you sense here? I feel like it, it, we have the opportunity, especially with, with the next three weeks, to just take over Texas, honestly. You know, uh, uh, I feel like, you know, we have the opportunity, we have the skill, we have the mentality, we have the drive, we have the leadership. You know, we have everything we need. We just, you know, we can't get in our own way. So this week and we have a, a, a great opportunity to, set the set the tone for this month you know set the tone for these next three games ahead what do you like most about playing road games especially in you know the power five level you've done it at colorado now you're doing it at the big 12 what's the best part about playing in a road environment no, just making that call that 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 crowd noise just hush you know, especially after they've been rowdy and they're happy that their team has made a couple of plays. But the moment that we start to make plays and even get in the end zone, it's just like a it sounds like a library almost. And that's the best feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm envisioning you catching that touchdown pass from Parker Kingston against Arkansas as a prime <laughs> example of that, right? Yeah, you can see the 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 surprise faces and just everyone just stunned in the audience. Oh, great insight. Dion, you got a million dollar smile. You got a million dollar attitude. Your energy is infectious. We're going to send you some BYU Sports Nation karma. Keep it up, man. Uh, we look forward to watching you play against Thank TCU you. and thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you. Go Cougs. <laughs> Dion Smith, let's make the road stadium sound like a library. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I like it. It was fantastic when he caught that touchdown pass in Fayetteville. So quiet. Everybody is absolutely stunned because it's 14 nothing, and then yep. the tide shifts immediately with one big explosive play. Boom goes the All right, down. looking at the running attack, and he feels like the attitude's better, that they were able to find some things that worked against Cincinnati. Yep. What would be good enough from BYU's running game 
at TCU this weekend to feel like, okay, it's still trending in the right direction. Keaton Slovis felt like 70 yards against Cincinnati was good enough. They had exactly 70 yards, and it was good enough. <laughs> so is it all on that number? I'm not sure. The number that matters more is the takeaways because BYU can rush for an anemic amount of yards like this if they are plus one, two, three in the margin. BYU is throwing for 200 plus, which is enough as well. BYU is not setting the world on fire in any passing offensive numbers right now. Uh, 56th in yards per attempt, 54th in quarterback rating, 87th in completion percentage. Very average. They're not doing anything that's like unbelievable. What they are doing is in wins getting takeaways, plus seven. So if BYU cannot take the ball away, they're going to have to be able to run it. Now remember, TCU runs uh, an odd front with three down linemen, and they play three safeties quite a bit. So it, it's a, a different-looking defense. Can BYU run against a three-man front You a would more think that that would help. Or does it open? You need play action, too. Riley Nelson, great point. BYU needs play action. They have not been good enough on play action compared to the previous three years where those are where the big plays have come. The big plays are coming, like, right after takeaways right now. I need BYU to rush for 100 yards. That's not asking one. For me to feel like, okay, trending in the right direction. And technically speaking, it would be trending in the right direction. Given that it's happened one time. If BYU can Houston? rush for 100 yards. Let's not have a loss of 20 yards with a snap over the head. Okay. Like, if you're up... 13 with two minutes left, I don't care. But overall, that doesn't help. BYU can rush for 100 yards against TCU. I would hope so. 100 that, is not That's enough. Crazy. If BYU throws for 225, rushes for 100, and is plus one in the turnover margin, I think they got a pretty good shot. BYU's yet to get 400 yards in a game, yet are four and one. Like, I would have guessed BYU was two and three. No, they've shown you me. You told me that before. They've the shown me that they can win the field position battle. And that more often than not, they can win the turnover battle. And then they can connected. be opportunistic with explosive plays after turnovers and after getting good field position. Enough to believe that if BYU doesn't have 375 or 400 total yards of offense, they can still win the game. Like, it's weird. BYU is winning with different formulas because Power 5 football now. Like it, it, and, and props to Jay Hill specifically for getting this defense in a position to help BYU win these games. If this is last year's defense, BYU is perhaps 1-4. Yes.